<laughs> oh, the devil. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, today's video, cables, not speaker cables, interconnects, RCAs, uh, coax, stuff like that. Now, I've done a couple of videos in the past on speaker cable. And while I didn't find any difference between 16 gauge and 14 gauge, I did find a significant difference, albeit it wasn't huge, but significant, okay, a difference in 12 gauge oxygen free cable compared to 14 gauge. So I concluded that 12 gauge oxygen free cable was uh, a significant improvement. Although I didn't spend a fortune on it, it was just Amazon Basics 12 gauge oxygen free cable about 50 or 60 quid. I'm not gonna spend hundreds of pounds on it. But interconnects, uh, do they make a difference? You know, I'm sure that, so I've got some cheapy ones. And I'm sure that if, uh, if I use them and use some more expensive ones, you would hear a bit of a difference because these are rubbish, <laughs> okay? Now, these ones here, they co that cost me, RCA cables cost me uh, three and a half quid and the coax will cost me two pounds. <laughs> Last of the big spend is me. <laughs> then I've got some Amazon Basics. Uh, got some Amazon Basics RCA and uh, some coax there. Now the coax Amazon Basics is I think seven quid and the RCA, I think a meter, a meter and a half long, maybe a meter, looks like a meter, is about uh, nine pounds. So all in all, 16 quid for two of them. And then I got a bit more expensive. Now I haven't got mental, okay? Because I do think the more you spend, it becomes the, the point of diminishing returns. Um, so I didn't want to go too mental, but I did want to get some decent cable. So I've got some QED digital audio coax here. Woohoo! That was 40 quid. So reasonably expensive, but not astronomical, not mental expensive, okay? Then I got this world's best cable Mogami, Mogami, okay. Uh, Internet Connect RCA cables. Uh, and these were, I think these were around about 35 to 40 quid as well. So 80 quid for a couple of cables. <laughs> but it's not astronomical. It's not stupid, dumb expensive. Do you know what I mean? And I do think once you, once you start going pop beyond 50 pound for a cable, it is, you got limitations. Is it going to sound that much better than a 50? Is a 200 quid cable or a thousand pound cable going to sound better than a 50 quid cable? Mm, debatable. Mm, you let me know. Anyway, let's have a look at these cables I've got. Woo! Okay, so the first off is the cheapy stuff. Um, there's not really much specs on these when you buy them on Amazon. I doubt these are double lined and they're probably copper clad aluminium. Uh, the fit's not going to be great, I'd imagine, on the coax. Uh, and the same goes for the RCA cables. I mean, they're pretty thin. They don't look like they're double insulated. Again, uh, cheap materials inside, I'd imagine. And not a great fit with these connectors here. And you may get something like this uh, when you buy, a, a you know, a, an amp or a DAC or something. These might be inside it. I would recommend never to use this type of cable. But hey, I want to try it just to see how it sounds and does it make a massive difference? Anyway, the next one, yoink. There you go. <laughs> okay, so these are the Amazon Basics cables. Let's start with the coax, yoink. Okay, so the, I mean, do you know what? They, they, they're pretty well made. Do you know what I mean? They look all right. And they're quite flexible. They feel uh, quite thick and durable. Um, I have used the RCAs, I haven't used the the digital cable, the coax before, but the RCAs do have a really nice tight fit on my amps. Um, so they seem pretty good. Now what are the what are this made of? Well, let's have a look at the specs. So it says that they have a copper clad center conductor, dielectrical insulation, aluminium braiding and dual foil sheeting for crisp clear audio. Now I think dielectric is just a material which is opposite to a conductor. So it holds the signal in there. So that shouldn't be too bad. It is only copper clad um, with aluminium in it. And it says it's got minimal energy loss and protection against RF and EM interference. 
easy grip, colour coded, mould durable, yet flexible PVC exterior. Ooh. Now going back to these, okay, now when I say about installation, this is a thing when you have cheap cables or too cheap a cable, is it's more about always oh, as much about the insulation as it is about the material it's made out of because if it's not insulated you are going to get RF and EM interference from other equipment you've got like DACs, radios, amps, CD players etc. So if you want to get a, a more pure audio source you want to have good insulation on your cables. I doubt very much these will. <laughs> Let's give it to them again. Get away, get away, get lost. Okay there we go back to these. Uh, now the RCAs they are colour coded not white and red but silver and red uh, and again you know they seem pretty good thick material uh, and what are the specs on these so again these have oh these have 24 gold plated full metal connectors protective double sheathing inside of the entire length of the cable oxygen free copper inner conductors that's good not bad at all um, so it looks like both these cables are pretty decently shielded and that's what I want to see in the cables how well is it shielded uh, and it looks like these are pretty good next ones Whoosh. Whoosh. and then we've got the QED digital audio coax uh, let's have a look at it I tell you what let's get it out of the box okay it's out of the box it was in there pretty good it took me a while to get it out <laughs> Now this is a little bit stiffer than the um, Amazon Basics cable, the coax cable, uh, but it does feel really well made. Let's make sure, let's get it, make sure, and that's it. So you can see there, let's have a look. It does seem really well made and uh, it looks just a little bit better than the, the Amazon Basics stuff. But like I said, it is a bit stiffer. Now that's probably because of the material it's made out of and the better shielding. I would imagine that uh, it's got better shielding and better material. Well, it doesn't really give much on the specs. Let me just put this in front here. You can see here it says 99.999% oxygen free copper conductors, coax construction op optimized for true 750 impedance, 75 ohm impedance, sorry, couldn't quite see that then. Uh, twin electrical screening for enhanced signal integrity 24 gold plated RCA connectors precision engineered plug with integrated grip Ooh. <laughs> okay so that's the uh, QED uh, digital audio cable now we come to the last but not least the let's have a look on the right side this is the WBC world's best cables now that's a bold claim isn't it okay made by, I, I don't know why I've got to say, I can't just say Mogami, I've got to say Mogami. I just, I don't know why, I don't have to. Now these have, um, these are very well made cables and they have a locking mechanism on the end. Hang on, let's see if I can get this off. So these have a locking mechanism on the end. They come unlocked. And I think what you do, you twist them like that to lock them. And then, and what it does, I think it pushes on that and pushes it together. And to unlock, so you just twist it like that to lock it. And to, so you obviously, you put it in first. And then you twist, lock it. And when you want, want to take it out, don't just pull it out. You pull your amp through the back of your hi-fi system. You just twist that like that and then pop it out and there you can see uh, how it works there unlocked insert twist clockwise to lock blah de blah de blah now what do you guys think of this let me do you really need burning time? 175 hours burning time for optimal performance. Well, I can see the benefit of that with an amp. Does a cable really need burning time? I don't know. Have any of you ever noticed that you need the burning time for a cable? Pfft, baffles me.
Now it comes with a little bit of literature with it, burn-in time, how to lock it and stuff like that, where the other cables didn't really come with anything. Um, it, it does feel like a premium cable. It is quite flexible. And the connectors do look really well made. And I, just here as well, you can see that that's screwed in there. Just there. You can see there's a screw to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. That's never, that's never coming out. So a very, very well-constructed cable. Now what does it say here, let's have a look. It says that the shield left unconnected at receiver end, floating shield, uh, ground sleeve shield, signal direction, shielded two core cable, shield connected to ground at source. Hmm, interesting. Now this was the first time reading uh, this piece of paper here. And I thought, hang on a minute, this is signal direction. So you have to have them in a certain way. You can't just put them in either side like most cables. It doesn't really matter what direction you put them in. And when I unpack the cables just then, it says here, look, it's got signal source on this end. So this plugs into your source. So if you're going from a CD player to an amp, that goes to your CD player. Now I'm going from my DAC, so I'm gonna attach my CD player via coax to my DAC, then from my DAC, to the amp. So these are going to have to go on the DAC. Okay, so I've been A-B testing them, recording them, playing them back through headphones and things like that. Now what I did first of all was just test the coax. It didn't change the RCA out at all, just the coax. And this is what I found. So where's, where's that thing? So this two pound coax, it was bloody awful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was just awful. Uh, the connection didn't fit well. It sounded a little shrill on top. I got it written down here, because I can't remember. Okay, I've written things down. Um, uh, the bass was a bit loose. Voices sounded muffled and poor instrument separation. Wasn't great. Um, the Amazon Basics, well, I've got to say, where's that? Where, where, where are you? Oh, there we are. The Amazon Basics, uh, it fitted well. <laughs> if I could get it untangled, what the deuce? Okay, it fitted well. Uh, much clearer presentation. Uh, it wasn't bad at all. I thought the bass was a little bit better, instrument set race, a bit better. All in all, yeah, it was better than the cheapy cable. But by quite a bit. Okay, and then we come to uh, the CRED cable, the QED, CRED, okay. Um, now, this was a very good tight fit, uh, very snug indeed, on my amp, on my CD player, sorry, it was pretty hard to get off. Um, but it was really more open soundstage, uh, just a better all-round sound stage, better, uh, better separation of the instruments. And I say out of the three, this was definitely better. Was it 30 quid better than the Amazon Basics? Well, that's up to you to decide. It was definitely better. Um, uh, but is it 30 quid better? I don't know. Uh, for me it is. It all depends if you want to eke out the best out of your system, then yeah, it was better. Uh, now, when it comes to the RCA, next page, okay. Where's them rubbishy things? These things. Ah, you, why you son of a... So, uh, again, poor fit, bit loose on the, on the connections. They were a bit thin. Voices were a little recessed. Um, it wasn't as bad as the two pound coax, the difference in sound. But the bass was a bit muddy, so they go in, yink, in the bin. <laughs> then we come to the, where they, they, there we are, the Amazon Basics. Again, a snug fit with these. They were slightly better, handled the bass better, but not a huge difference. There wasn't a huge difference between these and the cheapy ones. They were better, but not by a, a large margin. Um, which I was surprised at. I thought they'd sound a lot better, but they were better, but not a lot, <laughs> okay? 
Let me come to the, uh, oh wait, there we are. The WBC, world's best cables. <laughs> so you say, no. They were a bit fiddly to fit. Now when I was doing the old, you know, tighten them up, especially when you got other cables there, I had to take the other cables out to get my hand. You got to hold this piece here and then tighten that up there. And uh, it, it fitted on my amp pretty decent. I couldn't pull it off. On my DAC, it wasn't perfect. I think the DAC connections are maybe a tiny bit smaller. So I had to really get my hand on it and force out the Titan. So it was a bit fiddly. Uh, but in the end, I got them on there fine. It was all right. Now, what did I think of the sound? Well, again, a better sound stage. Okay. Definitely better mids, a little bit brighter, I thought and more open. So out of the three, this was definitely the best one. Um, I would say by a country mile, <laughs> okay? It was definitely better, much preferred the sound of these. Um, and again, is it worth the extra 20, 30 quid? I, I'd say yes, probably. It's not a huge amount of money to pay, is it? Now, I have done a sound test, but because, because, let's put these around my neck, because I look cool, yeah? How you doing? <laughs> right? Oh, I better watch my mic, can I? <laughs> what am I doing? Anyway, I did do a sound test, but I had to use recorded YouTube music. And that's MP3 320. And the production values of these songs are not great. So I have done a sound test, uh, which I'll play in a sec. So, but you have to be aware the quality of the recording from YouTube, and I've put them onto CD, through the coax and then through RCA, through my DAC, into the amp. Now, what I did, I used both cables on each. So I, on the, so I used the cheapy cables, the cheapy coax, cheapy RCA on the first one. Then I used the Amazon Basics coax and RCA on the second one. On the third one, I used the expensive cables, the QED and the world's best cables, Mogami. And, uh, well, anyway, let's play it and I'll give you my feedback after.
So what do you think? Now, what I found was when I was playing a CD, a proper CD, you know, a I was playing level 42, actually, there you go. Uh, the difference is way more apparent than when I played the YouTube, recorded YouTube CD. Um, even though on the uh, sound test, I do think that the, the more expensive cables sounded better, the difference wasn't as vast as when I did it with a, a, a proper, a, a proper recorded, a pre-recorded CD, which I bought. Um, so it must obviously due to the fact that the, the because of the poor recordings of the mp3s recorded off youtube onto cd that could affect the difference in sound they was definitely they were definitely better but not as apparent when i used a proper cd there you go i went around in circles then to get to my point but you got it you know it <laughs> okay anyway i'm not i'm just gonna chuck these in but i'm not chucking these no i put you down gently there you go there we are okay so there we are so what are, what are my final thoughts? My final thoughts are, is it worth spending 40, 50 pound on, on internet connects? And are they better? Yes, definitely. Absolutely. Okay, I do think they're better. Uh, I think it's worth the extra 40 quid if you want to eat, add a little bit of extra sound out to your system. And please don't use them cheapy cables. You may save a bit of money, but they're rubbish. Okay, anyway. If you got this far and you like the video, well, why are you liking it then? Sort it out. And if you haven't subscribed, give yourself a slap in the face, okay? Subscribe, come on. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next video.